distribution. In here, as you see that green color is the oil, the black one is the coal, red one is the natural gas. But this, this part is the boundary between the renewable energy and fossil fuel. Still, many countries use the fossil fuels, but it is nice to see that most of the European countries now focus about the renewable energy. We have a different type of the renewable energy. But if you look at the, in the graphs, you can see some red place. This is the geothermal. It is nice to see in the, for example, Japanese, Turkey, Italy, and then like, uh, you know, the other European countries, like New, New Zealand, uh, the other also New Zealand, they used to the, uh, geothermal energy. Dear my colleagues, as you know, if you look at the uh, global energy statistic, uh, uh, as you know that the great success for renewable energy in 2000 was in the power sector, the record is about the 300, uh, uh, 15 gigawatt of the new renewable capacity was added. At that time, 135 countries have renewable power targets and 150 countries have regulated renewable power policy and 3,146 gigawatt of global installed renewable power capacity. Uh, and then uh, also the levelized cost of the onshore wind power and solar PV are cheap, now cheaper than the fossil uh, average. And then at that time, more than 50% of the climate mitigation finance allocated to hydro power, solar, PV, and wind power. As you know that the carbon dioxide is a big problem for the all the countries, all the world. And then everybody want to, every country want to do, release the carbon dioxide. Energy related to emission account for the three quarter of the global carbon dioxide emission. Therefore, modern renewable energy increase but still, if you look at the data in 2020 data, as you see that this part is the fossil fuels, but we have just like a 12.6% of the total final energy is from the renewable energy. Still, 135 countries have some from of the net zero target covering about 88%. But if you look at in 2021, a rebound in economy activity led to about the 60% of increase of the carbon dioxide in the world. When you look at the just 10 years data, for example, 2009, 2019, you see that total final energy demand grew about 19%. Uh, and then you can imagine in 2021, about 366 US billion was, dollar was uh, uh, invested in the renewable. But when we compare the renewable fossil fuels, you see that fossil fuel subsidies reach about one five point nine trillion in two thousand twenty uh, dollar. Uh, this this meaning that uh, the equivalent uh, equivalent to uh, U.S. dollar is like uh, eleven minutes per uh, eleven minutes per uh, minute million per minute. Uh, therefore, we have uh, many action. United Nations have many submit. Many countries agree to phase down uh, unabated coal power. Dear my colleagues, if you look at the general and the global energy statistic, you see that from 2009-2020, for example, in 2009, it's about 80% in fossil fuels. 2019, it a little bit degrees, but still, you know, that not changed so much, but, but it's nice to see also uh, renewable energy, modern renewable is going to be increased. For example, in 2020, uh, it's 126 percent of modern renewable energy. Modern renewable energy consists of the uh, biomass, geothermal, and solar, and then also 3.9 percent hydropower. Also, uh, other renewable energy. Uh, this is like a uh, ocean, solar, and wind power. Also, when we look at the, you know, that the construction sectors, as you see that the power uh, sectors in 2009 and 2019, just at 10 years. Especially in the power sector, we can see that increase more. This is like a 6.6% from just in 10 years. But in building sectors, it's just 2%. In, in industry and agriculture, just 4%. And transportation is just about 1.2% increase about uh, uh, energy. But it is nice. Uh, you see that the renewable energy, we can see in the all sectors, in all energy sectors. 
Dear my colleagues, this is the very important uh, figures. Why the geothermal is very important in world. When you look at the capacity factors, this is very critical for energy sectors, as you know that. For example, the capacity factors of the nuclear is 92.7. Therefore, the people prefer the nuclear. But uh, when we compare the other energy, you see that geothermal is quite high capacity factors. When we compare the coal, hydropower, wind, and solar. And then in Turkey now, for example, this is the factor in Turkey is around 80% now. This is very important. Therefore, we say that geothermal energy is very critical and it is very important for the energy of the world. As you know that the geothermal energy among the existing renewable energy sources is the only source that provides base load electricity and effectively replace fossil-based energy sources, and it is secure, inacceptable, dispatchable, and flexible. Also, geothermal is contained in rocks, mostly of the hot fluid and steam within the earth crust, and is available all times through the years, unlike the intermediate renewable, en renewable energy resources. When we look at the geothermal energy use of sectors, as you see that in here, we have uh, geothermal heat pumps, geothermal hydrothermal, we have also an geothermal system. If you have a low temperatures, it is possible you can use heat pump. At that time, many European countries, they use heat pump and some cities just heated by the heat pumps. But hydrothermal, you need the fractures, you need the fluids, you, you, you have you need the injection system. But in the enhanced geothermal system, maybe you have hot source, but you have a fractures, maybe not fractures, but still maybe you have not fluid. But at that time, an angiothermal system is very popular in the world. We have quite a, a good potential about uh, uh, heat pumps. Uh, generally, the risk is minimum in here. Uh, but if you look in the futures, we know that the an angiothermal uh, geothermal system you know that the resource potential will be going to increase. Dear my colleagues, if you look at the global geothermal power capacity in, in, the, in the world, is reached about the 50,608 megawatt at the end of the 2020 uh, 20 to 20. But if you look at the geothermal electric installed capacity, you see that each year is going to be increased. And then also the direct, Installed direct use geothermal capacity is, is going to be increased like an exponential in the world. This is the very important. The meaning that many countries now uh, focus about the direct use application. When you look at the top 10 countries, if you look at the just 2021 data about the direct use, as you know that the China is the first, but second in the Turkey. Turkey. This is the, the we have now 5,100. 13 megawatt thermal. In the power gen electricity, power generation, at that time we have 1,691 megawatt electricity. Uh, we come uh, behind the uh, US, Indonesia, and Philippines. Okay, but you see that therefore the Turkish government, Turkish industries, they, they supported geothermal sector for direct use and uh, electricity production. You see that we start in the used to geothermal energy 1864 for power capacity, for power generation. But at the time, we come across many uh, hydrogeochemical problems. But uh, most of them is solved late the time. But after the 2014, as you see that also the regulation, also the government supported. And then the, this is going to be increased now. I believe that this year's because the, the new supported mechanism was announced by the government. Uh, I believe that this year's and next year's we can see also the more more power generation in Turkey. And then you know that direct use application also very very popular in the world, especially in the Europe. You see that the distribution of the each countries they used to install direct uh, heating. For example, Iceland is the one of the important country they use direct, and then like a Turkey Turkey. Germany, Sweden, French, also they used to uh, direct use application. Still, 
We have a number of the geothermal heating plants in the Europe, installed plan and development. But I know that in near futures, because after the Ukraine problems, Russia problems, and then a war, you see that now renewable energy, you know, that is going to be increased in the many parts of the Europe. In my colleagues, if you look at the geology and geothermal uh, relationships, you see the Alp Himalaya region is very complex region. But in, in the, this part is the, under the high tectonic regimes. But generally, if you look at the geology in this region, we can see that the Paleozoic to uh, quaternary materials. But each site is a different. I will explain a little more uh, later. If you look at the just uh, temperature distribution according to some wells, uh, you know that this is the Atlas of Geothermal Resource in Europe. If you look at the 1,000 meters, you see that in some place, the temperature is more than 200 degrees. But for example, in 2000 meters, you see that the temperature is, you know, that is more than, especially for example, in Turkey, this is the western part of Turkey, center of Turkey, and some eastern part of Turkey, they have a high temperature, the temperature more than 200 degrees in this region. Let's see that the uh, geology and relation of Turkey. You know that this is the Alp Himalaya tectonic regimes. In here, we have a compression regime in here. You see that in Anatolia, we have the, this, the, the open brown color is Alpine fault uh, thrust belt. And in center of Anatolia, we have Neogen extensional basin. But in here, the, in, the, in the Western part of the uh, European side, they have more uh, Neogen oceanic crust. But in here, as you see that all this part is controlled by tectonics. And then along these tectonics features, we can see that the geothermal in the in the this kind of the region if you look at the, in the turkey we have three important uh, components one of them is for example this is the uh, this part is the you see that area of strike slip neotectonic region with the uh, thrust component but in here we have area of the extensional neotectonic regimes but this part is the area of the strike slip neotectonic region with the normal component but you see that we have Northern Anatolian Fault and Eastern Anatolian Fault. This is the strike slip fault. Uh, this is very active fault. And then in, in, in the Western part, we have an extended, we have uh, some gravels, host and gravel system. And then in here, we have a many volcanic eruption place. You see that this is volcanic regions. And then we have some volcanic. If you see that if you are going top of the, some volcanic, like a Nemrut volcanic in here, we, in the top of the volcanic, you can see that the hot water in this area, like a 50, 58 degrees. Uh, if you look, if we take to the cross section from the north to south, in west and the east, if you look at the cross section, you see the Sakarya zones, this most of the granatoid related to some mineral, like an arsenic and more altered system. And then also we have a, like a finish materials. This some part is like a, a low metamorphic regions. And then in the, in the, in the, if you are coming to a little bit center in this part, this part, we have a more Mendrez metamorphic core complex. And then the other one in south part of the regions, uh, sorry, in, in this part of the region, they have a, we call that lichen ups. This is the more carbonate ups. If you look at the, in the eastern part of the Turkey, we have in here, if you, if you look at the cross section, we have a pontid. And then after them, we see that the asthenosphere, it comes to the near the surface. And then we have seen many volcanic eruption region in here. Then, and then also we have an Arabic plate. And then we have also some volcanic, like a Karajata volcanism. This is the, they, they have very important for the, some minerals. Uh, uh, they, they also, this region, they important for the, for the geothermal fluid. Dear my colleague, this is the geological, uh, ge geothermal uh, sources of the Turkey. As you see that in the red dot, they each show that the, some point of geothermal in Turkey. And then, but in the red color is the, uh, most of the granitic rocks. Yellow one is the Neogen volcanic system. And then in, in this green color, we have a Kratesis volcanics. As you see that we have a tectonic system and also we have a many volcanic system. And then also we have an intrusive rock. This is very important for the geothermal system because jump, some of the geothermal system directly related to tectonic, some of them related to tectonism, volcanism, some of them directly affected by the intrusive system. As you see that in here, we, we see that many wells, 
many geothermal every part of the Turkey. We we know that this wells. But if in the in the Graben, Büyük Mendes and Gedis Graben is very popular in here. We have, for example, the Büyük Mendes Graben, we have a many power generation in here, located in this area. In this region, we have a more than thousand wells. They are injection well, production well, and direct use uh, were used for the direct use and then power generation. But also in eastern part of Anatolia, eastern, we call that in this near the Arabic plates, this part is the important for the oil. At that time, in this region, we have more than more than 5,000 well, but this is the most uh, belong to the oil industry. But uh, we monitor it about the 97 wells. And then these wells, they include the geothermal fluid because the, also the reservoir temperature of this area is uh, uh, in, in here. Reservoir uh, is changed from 130 degrees, 90, uh, 30 to 100 30, 150 degrees, 150 degrees in this region. But uh, this quite, uh, you know, depth of the, the reservoir in here is 170 range, a range from 100, 127 to 3,960 meter depth. In, if you look at the, generally the, the temperature, highest temperature in the Turkey, as you see that we, 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 especially we see that the highest temperature in this region, we call that Nida region. Just the new drill was drilled in here. The depth of the drill is 380, 45 meters and then reach 340 degrees. And then in either region, in the Western part of Turkey, we have a 300 degrees. And also we have other wells in Nida region, again in here, 295 degrees. And then still, you know that uh, we, we need the more wells because we have not any more wells in this region. Therefore, I believe that uh, if you are going to drill the do you know the deepest wells maybe we reach a high temperature also in this region? And then, according to some temperatures, you know that the, some some geothermal field they use for the power generation. As you see that in in Turkey we have at the time sixty five uh, geothermal power generation. Uh, most of them is located the Büyük Mendes Graben in here, uh, but, but they use the same reservoir almost. But also they have some of the, in this is we call that Gedis Graben. They have also some power generation located in this region. But now also the Troya region, Çanakkale, northwest of Turkey, we have a four power generation. Where I live in Izmir, in here we have also one power generation. And then the most of the power generation ORC, but we have also double flush, double flush ORC. We have also two flood system. And then also we have a single flush and triple, and uh, triple flush and the ORC. But in here in Turkey now, some companies start to use to, uh, you know, the geothermal with the cascade application. For example, the Zorlu Group is one of the big company in here. This located in the uh, Büyük Mendes. They produce. They uh, this company have like a three hundred fifty megawatt electricity, uh, electricity. But they also they they use for the heating five thousand house heated by the uh, geothermal. This is, uh, come from the injection system. But in here, again, some power companies, they use for the greenhouse heating. And then also, they, for example, this Sanko is, again, in this part, they use for the uh, heating for the houses. If you look at the direct use application, you know that uh, if you look at the, you know, that the percent of the direct use in the world, 58.80%, they use for the ground source heat pumps, 80% in the uh, batting and swimming, 60% is like, you know, that the space heating. And then 3.5 is the greenhouse, 1.6 industry, and then 1.3 is the aquaculture pond and uh, railways heating. But if you look at the world leaders in direct use, you see that with heat pumps, China, US, Sweden. But if you are without heat pumps, you see that uh, China and then after then Turkey. As you know that we, if we, have, we can use to different temperatures with the different uh, uh, productions. For example, uh, okay, low temperature we use for the heat pumps. If you have a 30, 60 degrees, it's possible you can use for the heating and cooling. If you have a, like a 60, 70%, you can use also for the greenhouses application, foot drying. And then also if you have high temperature, you have use for the power generation. At the time in Turkey, we have a 80 degrees. We have a one of the power generation, you know, that they, they use 80 degrees. The meaning that in near features, maybe 
the 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 energy the low energy may also be used for the power generation. When we look at the direct use application distribution in Turkey as of 2020-22, you see that the thermal capacity of Turkey is 5,130 megawatt thermal. But according to all the data, you know that all the well data, we have now about a 60 gigawatt thermal theoretically geothermal potential. Now we use just 8.5% of this one. The meaning that we have huge potential we have to use in the different uh, sectors. In Turkey, they used to geothermal for district heating. This is 1,420 megawatt thermal. We used for greenhouse heating, thermal facility, thermal fluid, cooling, geothermal heat pump, and food drying. Look at in this is the pictures of the Turkey. As you see that in, in the different pictures of the Turkey, you see that some ruins. The meaning that the, in, if you are going to history, you see that there's some many Romans, they used to geothermal in Turkey. For example, in Pergamon, the one of the famous, they have, you know, that the, 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 they, they used to geothermal for the treated people. Still, this is the Pamukkale, this is very important area. And then the meaning that every part of Turkey has, you know, the application, old application of the geothermal. For example, this is my campus. Still, we have some spa in our campus, the old spots, Roman spots. If you look at the, in the Turkish maps, generally in the Turkey, uh, geothermal uh, exceeding all part of the regions, but most of the application can be seen in the Western part and central. In here, as you see that we can see the different color. For example, the blue one is the thermal activity. For example, the red one is power uh, space heating. And then this is the pink color is foot dry. You see that the other one like uh, you know, that uh, we can see that the other application. Uh, if you look at the uh, district heating system, district heating system is start in 1964 uh, in the Balıkesir, but you see that the pink color show that the distribution of the um, district heating in Turkey. Uh, for example, I live in Izmir. In here, we have we have still 40,000 houses, near the 40,000 houses heated by geothermal, this area. And then also in this region, <clears throat> we have a uh, cooling place. We, we use geothermal for also cooling. We have built in the Balchova, for example, in this region, uh, used absorption cooling system since 2018. And then you see that this is our Izmir regions. As you see that this is the Gra Gedis Graben. This is belongs to Gedis Graben. This is the attachment fault. This part is the metamorphic region. But in our system, we can see the finished material. This is some strike slip and then cut by the normal fault. In this region, we have high geothermal system. And then in the city now, we have many wells. The temperature of well range from 50, 62, 56 to 140 degrees. But this is the conception model. As you see that most of them is reservoir is a flish, the meaning that consists of sandstone, claystone, and then carbonate. But the cover is, you know, that by the uh, alluvium aquifers, uh, alluvium. But they have, we have two, uh, two aquifers in here. One of them is a shallow. This is like a one, one a range from one, 100 meters to 100, 300 meters. The other one is a near the 1,000 meters. And then this is, again, the, some cross-section. You see that this is the, all this part is, you know, controlled by the fault system. And then uh, we got good uh, reservoir in this area. And then for thermal tourism, as you see that the, all these colors, the mention about thermal activity in Turkish, the number of facility, you know, that according to the, the size. But you see that every part of Turkey, we have some thermal activity. And then government decided to improve some region for the thermal region, we call the thermal region. For example, central thermal region, this part. And then also in this part, we call that the uh, Phrygia thermal regions. And then also southern region, this part, and then also we call that South Asian thermal region in, in this part, the meaning that the support mechanism. And then the greenhouse is very important in Turkey. As you know, the Turkish greenhouse industry rank in the second in Europe in terms of total production. And then this part, we have application of the greenhouses in Turkey. And at that time, uh, you see that the more modern greenhouses cultivated uh, account for only 1,003 hectares, which is less than 2% of the total area. Uh, because we have total uh, greenhouses area in Turkey is about 79,000 hectares. But uh, greenhouses now is a popular in Turkey. 
For example, this is the Dikili region, is uh, just north of the Izmir region. The agrobi, this is the, the, one of the biggest in the greenhouses in, uh, in the world, this part. They, they, uh, and then in here at the time, we have 60,000 decades at the time, but in near features, still they're under construction in Turkey. You see that the different part of the Turkey, the cities, they, 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 they used to, you know, that they built a new uh, organization uh, area for geothermal. Uh, and the currently, uh, in, in Turkey is in the fourth place in the world in the fresh fruit and vegeta uh, vegetable production. But uh, the problem is, you know, that uh, uh, like a 30, 30, 35 percent of this, uh, uh, the, the food and vegetation is discarded. Uh, this is the problem. Therefore, drying could reduce food waste and contribute to the economy and environment. The purple color show that uh, some dry application in Turkey in different parts of the region. Let's see that some dry application in Turkey. For example, this is peach. This is date, watermelon. You see that the peers. We can see that in the in in, in the area. Let's see that see geochemical and environment uh, problems. If you look at the western part of Turkey, I say that this is the volcanic region, but this is the uh, <clears throat> graben area, this is the metamorphic area, and then this is the covered by the neogen sediments. But generally, you see that in here, as you see that, for example, in, if you look at the, this cross section from northwest to southeast, in here, as you see that we cut the grabens, but in Graben, also you can see some interzoof. This is the very important with, with the geothermal system. And then if you look at the geochemistry, look at this is all this point is the geothermal field. Number one, number two, you see that. But in here, you have some pi diagram. This is show that the measure and then cation. For example, this is the, the green one is a sodium and the, the purple color is chloride. For example, this number one is sodium chloride. Second one, you see that this is the Tuzla region, more is a chlorine. But in here, third, for example, this part, this, this geothermal field in here, as you see that this is sodium, sodium sulfate. But if you are coming in the, a little bit in this part, you see that in here, we can see that the sodium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate and sulfate. And then if you come in, in this part, you see that most of them calcium carbonate. But in here, again, you see that more of them is the sodium, sodium bicarbonate and sodium sulfide in this region. The meaning that each geothermal field, they have a different hydrogeochemical properties. If you look at the, the you know, that isotopic data, as you see that when we compare the, the uh, meteoric, uh, Mediterranean meteoric water lines, as you see that most of them is related to, related to meteoric water, but some of them is deep circulation. This is the, you know, that the, the oxygen is a shift, the meaning that the deep circulation, especially deep geothermal system, and uh, they have the old system. This is the one of the fields, uh, Northwest of Turkey, this Troya field. They have three important geothermal fields. One of them name is the Tuzla, the other one is the Kestambul and Hıdırlı, not far from each other. Uh, you see that in Tuzla region, they have the main reservoir is the volcanics in here. And Kastambul is the region is the, this is the uh, magmatic regions, the granite, but it's all, also they cut by some uh, uh, volcanic, alt volcanics. But uh, Hıdırla region also, they also they have a granitic and then also the filish. In here, as you see that, the, for example, this is the three fields, not far from each other's. But one of them is sodium chloride, the other one is sodium sulfide. But if you look at the electric conductivity value, it's very interesting. You see that, for example, Tuzla is near the sea, they're affected by the sea, but this is uh, old sea. The electric conductivity range from 70,000 to 18,000 microsiemens. Second one is a Suisse Kestambul. This is from 3,000 3, uh, and 3,046. Because it meant. Kudurlar, as you see that though, the meaning that each geothermal is the quite different properties. And then you see that if you are going to see that in Gigabach, you see that each one is located in different region, they have a different temperature. If you look at the com uh, you know, isotope composition, 
For example, Tuzla is the conate system, but for a castumble, this one is the, like a mixed water intrusion of seawater, and Hudrla is a metamorphic system. And then, dear my colleagues, for example, if you look at the Larderora, Italy, you see that this is one of the system, you know, that's one of the re reservoirs. But this is the unconfined system and this confined system. For example, this part is the temperature 100 degrees, this is 200 degrees because this is open and recharge area, reservoirs. And then, as you see that, for example, in this area, the fluid is calcium sulfate, and this one is the sodium chloride. The meaning that sometimes, you know, that the, in the same system, the the reservoir behavior will be a bit different. The same, you know, that it's in, in the carbon dioxide. Again, if you look at the carbon dioxide concentration in this kind of system, you see that in the, you know, the open system, you can see that cold sulfate metallic system. But if you are in here, as you see that the high temperature, maybe the other, we can see that some con concentration and carbon dioxide uh, escape in these regions. Okay, you know that in ge general term, all chemical elements, both in gas and liquid phase, can be divided into groups. You know the trace and geoindicators. Trace the conservatives. This is the, like a chlor, bor, borum, helium, argon, but uh, geoindicators, silicium, calcium, potassium. And we have a tracer. Tracer is the give the good data, you know, that they give the information about the source of the element, source of the system. For example, if you see that the chlorine is mentioned about the seawater, the argons, atmosphere, helium, a permanent the crust. If you see that helium four uh, three and helium four may mention about the mantle and the methane, hydrocarbons, if you see that sulfur and hydrochloric magmatic chamber. But also we have some Joe indicator, this is our relatively uh, reactive element that participates in chemical reaction, whose <clears throat> uh, equitable constant temperature depend uh, geothermometric function. Uh, carbon dioxide is very critical, very important uh, gases in the system, but most of the geothermal field, uh, you know, they, they, the, the main reservoir is the carbonate, but therefore this carbonate rocks, they have a high constant of carbon dioxide. Sometimes this is a problem for the environment, but now, related to the time, we see that the carbon, carbon, if you're used to so much geothermal fluid, the carbon dioxide level is going to be decreased related to time. But still, uh, carbon dioxide uh, is uh, it, okay. This is the uh, is a problem. But I know that this carbon dioxide is also the valuable. You know that it's possible you can use the carbon dioxide. You know that now in one of the projects was done in 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 uh, Iceland, Helen Site Field Power uh, Plant. In here, they capture carbon dioxide directly from air using geothermal energy. And also they mix with water and then uh, they injected the uh, reservoirs. But in the reservoir, we can see that the, uh, you know there's some minerals. And then this is the, some sample from these regions. As you see that this is the place they did, uh, still they, are, they, increased the, they want to increase their systems in here. And this is the place they collected the uh, carbon dioxide uh, air from air. In Turkey, there is some fields, they have a high carbon dioxide, but they collected carbon dioxide, but this carbon dioxide used for the production. For example, they this some power generation, uh, they used the liquid carbon dioxide, production carbon dioxide. This is the capacity about this one. They used for the drinking uh, industry, like coke industry at the time. Also, they used for the fire. You know, the fire is a big problem. Now we say that please collect these carbon dioxide tanks and then put in the some fireplace. Maybe you can use for the fire. This is also important, our suggestion for the system. The other big problem, you know, that in the geothermal, when you are in the reservoir, you know, that temperature is high, maybe the, the you know, pressure is high. But when they, we, use, we, we, we drill the wells, uh, for example, production wells, you know, that the, after the uh, pumping the uh, fluid, you know that the, uh, with the flushing point region, carbon dioxide digestion, and then you see they come to the near the surface, maybe temperature will decrease. And if you go to the system, as you see that the, uh, the temperature and pressure going to decrease. And then after then, if you uh, injected the fluid, you know that the, again, the temperature is going to decrease and the pressure is going to decrease. But this is the effect of the chemistry of the water. For example, from here to here, you see that from reservoir to surface, you see that the how uh, some elements, you know, that some mineral will be changed in the in the system. For example, uh, you can see some scaling problem. For example, this is production wells. 
in in calcite you see that in here steritolamide but in the rejection you see that the, the concentration of the calcite aragonitolamide is going to be increased because of the the temperature low temperature because of the change of the pressure we did one of uh, one, the, the, the one of the uh, big european project this is the, the name is the redefining the geothermal fluid properties at the extreme condition this is to cover most of the european countries they have very good database about this region therefore I suggest that if you find time, go to this web page and then check the, all the data and then see that uh, some solution. Uh, and then in here, we especially focus about uh, minimize the scaling problem of the European. Let's see one of the example about this one. You know that Tuzla region, as you as I, I, I just informed before a little bit before, uh, you know that Tuzla is high saline system uh, in uh, northwest of Turkey near the sea. And then the major reserve is a volcanic region. We have a three important wells in here uh, for the three production wells for power generation. And then this is the you know the conception model of region. Oh, the main reserve is the volcanics. Uh, the 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 cap one is the neogen sandstone and claystone, but main reserve is volcanic system. And then in here, main problem is the scale. And then we can see in this two geotherms, we can see that the silica based scaling which is the most difficult scaling to remove is really observed. And then if you, if you look at the rock sample, the most of the, about 80% of rock sample consists of the silicium and then 10% of potassium, the most of the undecided trachea undecided reservoir, for example, number 16. And then if you, number nine is also the uh, silicium a little bit uh, lower than number 16, but still is 10% potassium, uh, potassium oxide. Uh, and the, uh, the rock sample from Tuzla site have high potassium values. And then we collected the uh, scale sample from the inhibitors pipe. As you see that different scale in, is in the system. And then this is scaling like the micro scale data. And then this is XRD values. If you look at in here, you see that we can see that galena and silicium oxide. You see that in here, silicium, uh, iron, uh, and then uh, some uh, iron and silicium and some iron min the other minerals. And then also when we look at the uh, scale sample in the geothermal wells, this is tech from wells, you can see that in the each part is a, a little bit different. But in, in if when we analyze the each samples, you see that we can uh, in here we can see that some of them galena and also calcium carbonate in this one. This is the uh, again the scan like the microscope data and then also this is uh, started data. And uh, this scale sample uh, region and scale samples uh, are rich for the iron, silicium, calcium, magnesium, and then lead. Uh, these elements are associated with the saponite minerals. And then uh, the, the concentration of the lead in in the scale degrees dramatically indicated reservoir in the rich term of the lead. And then this is the sodium chloride type. And then this is the you know that the Piper and Schuller diagram I will mention. But if you look at the pH is very important for the element behaviors. Generally, you see that the, in the wellhead, the pH is a low around the acidic, pH around six, but uh, no inhibitor without inhibitor, you know, that uh, before the separators, uh, you, uh, separate, and you see the pH reach around uh, uh, 7.8. Uh, okay, therefore we can use, we, this make a problem, silicate silica problem, but therefore we used to uh, some inhibitors. Okay, uh, the same in the different time. But you see that electric conductive value is very high. Why I mention about the Tuzla region? Because this very complex region. If you solve that this complex region, it's easy you can go to the other fluid. For example, electric conductive, you can imagine 80,000, more than 80,000, uh, mic uh, mi uh, 80 micro Siemens centimeters. So, sorry, milli Siemens centimeters. And then you see that the silicate values uh, is, is high, but it is important related time. You see that sometimes, you know, this is the related time. Sometimes it's going to be decreased. The meaning that uh, maybe the, uh, the silicate, uh, you know, that we see in the systems, you know, that's uh, the, 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 the uh, silicate, you can see that in the pipeline. And then also this, this type of the system, they have some elements, they have some concentration, high elements, for example, in here, you can see some, for example, you can see aluminum, boron, and then lithium, 
uh, and then iron, you see that some element. And then also strontium is very high in here. Uh, you see that you can see the other, like a cobalt, nickel, lead, buckle, co it's a copper in this side. And then this is all, again, this is the old system and then deep circulation. And then mo most of them are Marian, modern Marian system, the evaporitic rocks located in the side, according to the model. Temperature is about 330 degrees. And then reservoir modeling, they show that the region is high temperature is very important for the uh, uh, for the geothermal side, the field. In here, we did many uh, uh, saturation index analysis or modeling, but uh, you see that this is a different temperature, but especially we can see that the sphalerite in this region, uh, the silicate and iron uh, oxide is a for problem of this kind of the system. You know, silicate is, is a very uh, handicapped, you know, it's very difficult, it's not easy, you can, uh, you know, that uh, remove this kind of the, the problems. Okay, what we, we will did in here, in the, in here we capture, you know, that, uh, we know that uh, in the flushing, uh, the carbon dioxide is decreasing, you know, that uh, expanded, but we collected carbon dioxide, we injected carbon dioxide in a pipeline. You know, the carbon dioxide is the acid, we will change the pH. When we did this one, we minimized the scaling problem. Now, this side is working very well. We have very good, you know, that application, this application in the world. Uh, the currently carbon dioxide inject with about uh, amount about uh, 88 ppm uh, is done to control the scale problem in the to the geothermal field. And now the carbon dioxide we use for the uh, inhibitor, and this is very. Uh, this is very important also for the uh, corrosion because it makes a less corrosion when we compare the other uh, system. Okay, the other system, for example, this is the Germanic. This is the metamorphic regions in Anatolia. The main problem with Germanic is a city night scaling. For example, this is a preheater system. Heat exchanger is you see that colors city scaling uh, cause. Uh, efficiency and economic loss in the power plant, clogging and heat exchanger tubes. And then this is the, the three-dimension conceptual model of the region. They have a different direction valves in here. This is metamorphics, but the, 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 you know, that most of the metamorphic drugs, and then this is include the Mikashis, most of the Mikashis in here. And this is the uh, reservoir temperature numerical model. The temperature is reached about 200 degrees, 250 degrees in this region. Okay, uh, generally is very good uh, aquifers. And then in here, we can see that the quartz, albite, muscovite, and pyrite mineral in the, in the system, uh, in this region. And then you see that if you are take a, uh, you know, that um, XRD values, it is XRF values, for example, this is antimony. You see that very high, sulfur is element very high in the scale samples. Uh, we can see in the uh, scanning micro microbe data also. This is important. And then you see that this part is, is it's quite different from the Tuzla region because this part is the more they include the bicarbonate. Therefore, we call it the sodium bicarbonate type system in here, a metamorphic system. And also this is the old system and deep also deep circulation. And then also we have different type of the antimony in here, according to our, uh, you know, the, the analysis, you see that stimulant concentration range from 0.009 to 1.223 ppm. Uh, we have we can see that the trio antimony species, and we can see also the hydroxide to antimony species uh, in these regions. And then, especially, we can see that the antimony uh, in the uh, if you are going to reject ninety five degrees, you can see that the antimony in the system. Okay, dear my colleagues, you know that the critical minerals uh, is very important for geothermal. Now, the United States, U.S., Europe, and then China focus about the critical minerals. And then in the critical minerals, as you see that these three countries more focus about the aluminum, lithium, and then copper, nickel, you know, that's some minerals. And then you know, we know that the, most of the active geothermal resources are usually found along to the major fault system. And then you see that Turkey is also located to one of the major, this fault system. But uh, along this old uh, fault system, you know, that we have also many volcanic area. And then this also includes some minerals. For example, this is some concentration of the, for example, this is the arsenic. Uh, I mentioned about arsenic in here, but no arsenic is a toxic, but arsenic is also a valuable element for the industry. Don't forget, this is also important. 
But look at in here, this is the, in Turkey, the distribution of the, for example, some arsenic value in here, but in, in here also the boron. Why the boron? Uh, boron is very critical, uh, important for, for countries. You, you know that the Larderora place, for example, in Larderora first they build for the extraction boron. Then they move to the shift to the uh, energy. But if you, if you see that the most of the geothermal system, for example, in, in Anatolia, in Turkey, we have a uh, high concentrated boron. You know, reach about uh, like a 69 milligram uh, liters. Uh, it is important. For example, now we did one of the study. We just say that we should use this geothermal fluid for the agriculture, water, energy, food nexus. Uh, this is our uh, application field. You see that we, we treated the geothermal because we removed the arsenic and boron. Still, the geothermal fluid have many minerals. We irrigated the fields. We, but we saw that the food is grow quickly. We see that the, the efficiency is more than a regular system. When we uh, checked the mineral recovery from the geothermal fluids, you know the history of mineral recovery. As you know that uh, in uh, it, it larder or begins recovery of boric acid from the thermal pools. And then you know that after the 1920, also the uh, larder or added sodium perporate uh, and also the carbonic acid. Also, you know that uh, in 19, uh, 1964 and 1967, US, you know that mentioned about uh, some, uh, the focus about some salt and some minerals. And then also in Iceland, they they used to salt. And then, but after the, in 2013, we see that uh, some countries, uh, you know, that start focus about, uh, uh, you know, that uh, focus about lithium, mangan and zinc, processes. You know that geothermal fluid contains significant concentration of potential value minerals such as the boron, strontium, lithium, gold, copper, zinc. Uh, but uh, the, uh, mineral recovery continues to be an issue of the interest of the geothermal community. Again, if you want to interest the lithium concentration or the other element, you know that for the geothermal of the European, I suggest again you should go to the this uh, uh, fluid atlas. This is also the uh, project, one of the uh, European project, this reflect project. And then this is open source project. You can see that the, where we have high concentration, medium, we ha where we have calcium, sulfate, and then other scaling. You can see that some well data in here. This is open source system. And then you know that lithium, uh, lithium ion battery are used widely in the portable electronic device, electronic items. You know that uh, this is some samples about this one. And then you know that the uh, uh, lithium demand and uh, in, uh, it's going to be increased in the uh, in the in the world. You see that the, uh, this is the graphs about how to increase the demand. As you know that a typical electric car battery package weight is between 220 second seven to 544 kilograms. This is for electrical vehicles. You see that uh, you know that the, most of the lithium resources are divided into categories. One of them is solid. This is mining from uh, mining of the spodium uh, and then also liquid from maybe salt lake brain and brine, maybe geothermal brine and seawaters. Uh, uh, you know that lithium production countries, you know that Ch Chile, Australia, China, and Alge uh, Argentina and Brazil. <clears throat> but uh, in some countries, they evaporated the salt lakes. Still in Turkey, we have a salt sea, but uh, they have and they have high constant lithium. But this is the, you know, that the, this is the flow chart uh, of the solvent extraction process, the extraction process system washing. But this is the uh, a quite long, complex and inefficiency process of the purification because they include the more, you know, that the, some mineral, you know, is not easy, but still uh, we see that some application in the world. But we know that the list of the, uh, if you look at the, uh, you know, that the, uh, demand of the lithium expected to uh, increase uh, dramatically in the world. You know, the most of the electric vehicles and batteries and then others. Uh, the market, uh, we have a high market uh, about this one. And then price also going to be increased uh, of the lithium. You see that how the price will be going to be increased, critical. Not just lithium, but now people is focused about the tellurium, European yttrium, you know, that nickel, the other critical raw minerals. 
maybe they said that maybe this come from the geothermal system. As you know that we have different uh, models, we have different implementation, we have different uh, chemical process for the extract lithium. One of them we, uh, we have in the world, we know that package column, we have osmosis, we have evaporation, precipitation, inorganic substance, electro winning, uh, oxidation solvent. But in geothermal, uh, because geothermal fluid is hot water, and then it is not easy. You can, you know, make a cold and then extract the lithium. It's difficult. Uh, therefore, uh, before your injection, you have to, uh, you know, that extract the lithium before your injection. This is very important, very critical. Uh, the absorption is very important uh, for lithium. You know, the one of the process about this one. Uh, for this one, uh, my colleagues, uh, our groups working about the lithium extraction from geothermal in our campus. Uh, we did many uh, paper about this one. We did many study about this one. Uh, we, we, okay, this is the, we used the uh, electrospin fi fiber mat for the hypersaline geothermal uh, brine. Uh, uh, we also applied one of the pilot system in Tuzla geothermal field in the Turkey. And then also published one of the quite new papers. Uh, also these papers uh, 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 is about the lithium extraction from geothermal brine using the alpha mangan oxide case study from Tuzla. Uh, we want to increase this system. <clears throat> this is very, I hope that in near features, we got the good results. Not just lithium, we also focus about the other element of the critical minerals. Uh, and then also one of the, our paper was published uh, in this year's about the lithium and energy extraction elements, its role of future energy demand and carbon emission mitigation strategies the title of these papers, the published in Geothermics. I suggest that you also read this one. We mentioned about the, uh, we just evaluated in the, in the world. Uh, I'm happy also to Chandra with, with us, uh, Chandra, Professor Chandra work with us, we are work together. And then as you know that if you look at the direct lithium extraction uh, technology, many country, many company now focus about uh, uh, different methods. For example, now we have uh, some lab base, for example, absorption base. We know that we have, uh, you know, the ion exchange, solvent, membranes, electrochemical. Uh, we have some pilot in the world. We know that. Uh, 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 still, we have contact with these companies. Uh, commercials. Uh, we we sometimes we news some uh, some news, but still we have not seen that the uh, uh, you know the real big geothermal you know that the uh, commercial you know that uh, gained the lithium. Uh, I said that, uh, okay, in the cold water is okay, but hot water is is, is a different. Now we have we have we have one of the project about this one. Uh, this is raw minerals from the geothermal fluid. The name one, this critical raw mineral project, occurrence enriched extraction. Uh, this uh, this is the uh, most of the, uh, the you know that the European countries working about this one. The, we, we we are also the part of this project. We are work together. I hope that in near future we got the good result about uh, lithium extraction, lithium and other mineral uh, from the geothermal fluid. And then uh, it is possible you can use the uh, geothermal for the different uh, uh, area. For example, uh, I did this study many, many years ago. I collected copper, I used the geothermal, I produced the copper sulfide. And then we collected the, uh, for example, uh, cheese, waste of cheese. We produced the wave materials. The wave material is very useful at the time for the child food. And then uh, we did this uh, study many years ago. Uh, but uh, you know that it is possible you can use in geothermal. The other and important thing, as you know, that the uh, geo NN geothermal system is very important. Uh, you know that NN geothermal system are geothermal reservoir enable for economic utilization of low permeability conductive rocks by creating fluid convective uh, in initial low permeability rock through hydraulic thermal or chemical uh, stimulation. Uh, and then uh, you see that you have uh, hot sources, but many countries now working about this one, this system. And then one of the, uh, our good books was published uh, in this year's. Uh, this is include to all the sample of the words uh, in these books. You know that uh, we believe that this is emerging future clean energy sources. We believe uh, you, you, you see that the different uh, application about this one for example this is the it is possible you can drill two wells it's possible you can use one well closed loop system you know and many different 
system now. You know that many countries now st still use this technology. And then you know that the pil uh, pilot power plant in, in Sus uh, and Copper Basin and Adon, uh, they say that the uh, uh, seven, uh, seven, nine and, uh, plus uh, 10 over six kilowatt hours of electricity can be generated from one cubic kilometers of the such granite for uh, 30 years. And then we, we we just checked the Turkey, and then this is the the granite in the our our plate Anatolia plate, and then uh, you see that this is a different age, but this granite includes the high concentration of the radionuclide like uranium, thorium, and potassium. This is the 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 the, the value is very good uh, for the significant elements, and then this is the heat flux maps, and this is the Curie uh, depth maps of the regions. Uh, as you see that the, we have very good curry is not very depth in here as you see like the six seven uh, kilometers and then the heat production values obtained you know that by Rybach 976 equation and then this this equation include do you see that in here we calculate the rock density and then concentration of nuclear and also surface heat flux calculated using by uh, Laham Bruch equation and this uh, according to this equation and then it is possible you can calculate the energy. Then when we are, you know, that uh, compare the Turkey side, you know, that in Western part of Anatolia, we, we, we see that, the, you know, that the, in Turkey, they have huge amount of the potential for the uh, EGS. In Western Anatolia, uh, EGS electricity generates potential of approximately 7 billion megawatt electricity. If you can imagine, this is very huge amount of the values. This is very important uh, for the future energy. Uh, therefore, I believe that the geothermal. We published many papers about this one. This is some papers. Uh, geothermal resource for sustainable development. Uh, energy research. We also environment earth science. You see that, again, carbon dioxide em emission mitigation strategy through an geothermal system. And then also Turkish Journal of Earth Science. Okay. Uh, as a result, uh, geothermal energy production is refined and expanded to benefit countries to growth. With the continuous technology development, geothermal can be expanded all over the world and already a negligible environmental uh, geothermal impact can be reduced to nearly zero. EGS uh, systems target of the world, this product potential expected to be realized during the next 20 periods. It is important to understand the hydrogeochemical behavior of the heavy metal in geothermal fluid. Also, it is important to understand behavior of geothermal fluid in different pressure and temperature in different reservoirs. Also, it is important to focus on the geothermal mining, uh, minimize the toxic element in the fluid. Uh, I believe that the geothermal energy is very important for sustainable of the, all the countries. We should minimize the environment problems. We should focus about the innovative application. We should extract mineral from geothermal. And it is also important to support the research and development geothermal application. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, this uh, this is the one of the caldera in Turkey. Uh, in, in this caldera, uh, they, they have uh, hot water in this caldera in the Eastern Anatolia. Uh, I hope that in the future, if you want to come to Turkey, we would be glad to show this place to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Alper. This was a really good presentation. Very uh... Very detailed in a sense and covering a lot of the aspects on the geothermal energy, you know, from from what's going on in Turkey to to the minerals and what the future could look like. So that was very well received. We got some really nice comments in the chat box. Um, the audience thanking you for such a great presentation. I'll jump straight to some questions that we got from our audience. So Pejman is asking. Uh, any issues with naturally occurring radioactive materials in geothermal fluid in Turkey? If yes, what kind of practices are being used to handle and treat the norm issues? Uh, Gabriel, do you mean that for high concentration uh, grana, uh, EGS system for, or? Just generally for the naturally occurring radioactive materials that you could find um, in the fluids. Uh, how uh, how uh, is that uh, being treated? Uh, in, in the granite regions, in the granite regions, we have a high concentration of the system. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, in the Kili region, in uh, I mentioned about the Kestamo region, they have high concentration of uranium, thorium, and potassium, mm -hmm. and then also some radons. We can see that in the geothermal fluid. In this area, they have a positive effect the heat of the system. Therefore, the potential is quite high in here. Uh, this is very important also for the EGS system. 
this is still they have some fluid in the site. Still, we use this for power generation in some place. Still, we have some gas, but for the EGS, also this is important. Mm -hmm. We have some. I think I think one of the focuses on the Pajman side was a little bit on what kind of practices you know are these companies in Turkey using to to counteract you know the presence of these radioactive materials because the, there needs to be some mitigation plan, right? Uh, at that time, you know that the, this this type of the granite, mm -hmm. uh, they have they, they important for the EGS system, but uh, okay. at that time nobody focused about uh, extract the radionuclide in here. Just uh, we, we 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 for the geothermal we say that this is the hot point for the futures uh, for the energy, but uh, for application, okay, we 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 we, we say that. Uh, you have to, okay, if you want to use this granite, you have to be careful. You know that we have some regulation about this one uh, yeah. for construction. But for, yeah. for yeah, for the mineral extraction, nobody at the time talks about this one. Okay, so the, there is practices in place of handling that. Uh, and then, you know, from country to country, the regulations will change, but the goal is somewhat the same. Uh, Serkan mentioned, he says, you mentioned some rare earth as potential targets for geothermal extraction, how do Turkish reservoirs look like in terms of rare earth concentrations? Uh, yeah, at the time, you know that uh, we have not all the data of the region. This is still mm. is a big gap for all the countries, not just Turkey. We have some wells. According to some wells, they have some minerals. For example, mm. lithium concentration. At the time, uh, we know that some fields have a high concentration of lithium, but this is the some region they have a strontium value, some some part they have a European value, European uh, elements, uh, but generally uh, it is not easy. You say that the total, you know, that the capacity, you know, that you not uh, say that uh, the amount, uh, they, they need the time because now the government they have a big project, they collected all the uh, sample from the field, they try to understand how much to concentrate. We have. Many fields, but some of the fields they have a low concentration of the elements. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in Buick Mendes Graben, they have like a range from the three to seven, eight uh, milligram liters. This is the, the, the value is low. But if you are going to the like a tooth region, they have like a 23 ppm. Uh, you know, is it changeable? Uh, yeah. we, we need the time for the say this one. So there is variability in the concentrations. And obviously, if you look at the rare earth minerals, there's got to be a cutoff, you know, quantitative value that would entice you to to invest more in terms of extraction and making it um, making it worthwhile economically, right? Like you said earlier, if the concentrations are lower, then you wouldn't be able to do that. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, we got a question from Rodriguez. And it says, on average, how deep are the geothermal wells in Turkey? I think you covered that, but how much time do they take to drill? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, dear, dear Gabriel, the deepest one is around uh, 4,000 meters. Four kilometers, okay. Yeah, four kilometers. Uh, one of the Buick uh, Mendes Graben and the other one is the central Anatolia. We have not very deep wells uh, for geothermal, uh, very few wells. Uh, because mm -hmm. uh, most of the wells in Turkey are around a thousand meters in Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, it, it is take about two months, two three months. Two months. Two, three but months if you set up the system, uh, it just take it to two months. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I assume those. Uh, but do you have a sense of what are the costs of these kind of projects drilling to two kilometers? Do you have like a range in your mind or experience with it? Uh, you know, it is it changeable? And mm, then at the time, the, when you look at the currency of Turkey, dollar, uh, we have very low in Turkey at the time. Uh, mm. But uh, you know that uh, uh, one uh, one thousand meters about one million dollar. Okay, so a million per kilometer. Yeah, Rodriguez, we uh, hopefully we answered your question. Uh, then we have another question from uh, Soren. It says. How big of a problem is stuck pipe when you're drilling these wells? Uh, the the meaning that the stuck piles meaning stuck pipe during drilling, right? If you have a stuck pipe situation, 
during the drill, drilling process? Like, is that a big problem in these geothermal wells or no? Uh, we come across some problems uh, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that the, the engineering is very important. You have to case yeah. it very well. You know, that you have to, you, you have to, we, we've come across about to like a 10 years ago, one of the wells just exploded. And this is the affected yeah. place. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, it, therefore, the government put the, you know, that the, they controlled the, they, they put the, uh, you know, that they monitoring many times, you know, that the wells. Uh, but uh, yes, sometimes if you have a good drill, if you have good technology, if you have good monitoring, it's a no problem. But other case, uh, because some fields have high pressures, uh, uh, if they directly cut to the uh, 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 fault, you know, they go to the fault, pressure is going to increase. Yes, we got some, pro therefore, some region of Turkey, the people is very sensible about geothermal because this kind of the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, power, they people don't like so much power generation at the time in Turkey because of this kind of the problems. But uh, now the, the 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 people is very sensible. Government is very sensible. Uh, also, the the geothermal sectors in Turkey now, uh, the different association. We have a three type of association now. Each one is the you know that they control each other. So also they, it's kind of. Mm -hmm. I think you know a lot of comment to that. I think what's important, and I'm sure the audience here is also aware of it in their respective work areas. It's it's the communication with the public. So a lot of the times we see the transparency, being able to let the community know of what's going on and making sure that you have some of the best in class technical people taking care of the work, right? Because the problem uh, with expanding and, and, and keeping the momentum of, a, of an energy source like geothermal is, is if a little incident happens um, and it's not handled properly, it's not communicated properly, it leaves a bad taste. And then when it leaves a bad taste, people generally will you know, be against it. And so now, now you cannot keep investing maybe in drilling deeper wells, creating enhanced geothermal systems. I mean, those numbers you showed earlier, and I think uh, I was I was quite appalled when you looked at the EGS, the millions of megawatts that you can get out of the potential of what's there. That's, that almost seems like a quote, quote, dream, but it's, it's feasible with the innovation that we have and that's ongoing right now in the geothermal world. That, that is a future that is very possible so long as you know we keep talking to each other and keep sharing the insights like you're doing. Um, I would jump to one more question from Peshman. It says, it's a very interesting question. It says, can mineral recovery impose geomechanical issues in the geothermal field due to the dissolution of the formation after injection of the fluid? At that time, uh, yeah, it, 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 the, our idea, yeah, because we say that, uh, it is not easy. You can change the system sometimes because you are you used to power generation, you you used to for the direct use application, but the it is important you have to, you know that institute you can extract the system. Uh, uh, for fluids, uh, I believe that is possible because the some some materials is a capture the lithium minerals. Uh, uh, it is feasible. It is possible. You can uh, get the lithium, uh, but uh, you know that it needs the time. You know that at the time is not economically efficiency, but we we, we see that. The, but, uh, but for the but... Rock, rock samples, for the scaling mm -hmm. sample, uh, some scale sample, you know that uh, some some concentration of the element is high. We should also think about this one, because in this in this one in in the rocks, it, it you know the normal mining process. Still in the Turkey, we have a boron field and bore and lithium they have in the same place. Still, we have a pilot in Turkey. Still, we are, you know, they extracted the, from the rocks. Uh, yeah, the process from the rocks to system is easy at the time. But if you have a mm -hmm. high concentration. I mean, essentially, if you're if you're changing the state of the dynamic of the subsurface reservoir, you would expect a reflection on the geomechanics. So, so it's, it's important to keep a sense of the dynamic changes in the reservoir as you're extracting minerals. Now, following that question, Rainer Wilhelms asks, is there a requirement to do a 3D seismic to get an idea of possible geomechanical issue due to these wells? Uh, some, field, uh, some, some people, some company did this one. 
uh, still uh, we have not any regulation about this one but uh, uh, some i know that some government some place they monitoring some wells uh, uh, yeah generally at the time people know that this one uh, we we discuss about this one with the companies because the, you know that most of the private company uh, i hope that in near future more at the time okay. we have we have some sample about about this one understood well it looks like we came to an end to our questions uh one thing that obviously is the conclusion of this talk first of all it's a very detailed presentation so to let this uh register uh, the participants know uh we will be sharing a recording of this talk and then a compressed slide pack in pdf of what's possible to share from dr alper so you can take time to digest because there was a lot of information very meaningful information. And I think one of the conclusions we also draw and that we know is geothermal itself, not only is giving us you know, direct heat and not only it's cleaner, and now we're looking, you know, we're doing power generation in the world and there's, there's talk and implementation plans for super hot rock. So we're breaking the barriers of what's possible. And then there's production of minerals and we're helping out other other industries you know the solar world and whatever is going on out there so the the, the potential is endless and Turkey is one of the leaders obviously with what's currently going on so I think today's presentation was very useful to see it from your perspective and I wanted to thank you personally and also in the name of all the SP sections that are involved in this I want to thank Bejman Omrani who who connected us um, he's always very supporting of these of these talks. So thank you very much. And I want to thank the audience for being here today. You will probably have additional questions after you go through the slide pack. Please uh, stay synced. We will be posting our next month's talk. We're going to dive into surface facilities for geothermal plants and how all that system works. And then we're also going to dive into AGS systems. What are the ups and downs? What is the future plan for those? And then as we progress through the months, the idea is also to dive into super hot rock. What are the biggest challenges? How are we looking for the next 10 years? Um, and then just keep building on it. So thank you once again, Dr. Alper, very much for your time. And thank you everyone for attending the talk today. Thank you very much. Have a good time. Good.